Phantom. And now, of course, what we're doing today is we've come with Wraith. I snapped this picture with my um, iPhone seconds after we'd taken the cover off the car at the Geneva Auto Show in March. Uh, fantastic interest in this car from the press. And the interest was mainly because of this radical design we came with. Nobody was expecting a fastback design like this, a design which speaks of power and agility and all that sort of stuff. Not traditional words that you hear with, with Rolls-Royce. Um, people were expecting a much more normal, graceful, three-box, feminine, coupe-style car which would have fitted with Rolls-Royce a bit better in people's minds, but we didn't. We came with this and a little bit more about that in a moment. Of course, all these cars that you've now just seen are all hand-built at our factory in the south of England the home of Rolls-Royce in West Sussex in the south of England. And it looks like that. It's a wonderful, modern, contemporary place, um, designed and built by a very famous British architect, Sir Nicholas Grimshaw. It's a clean, quiet, uh, aesthetically very pleasant place to work and build cars. And all the Rolls-Royces in the world are built right there in West Sussex uh, in this wonderful facility. The line itself is clean, it's quiet, it's, there are no machinery, there's no uh, robots. Uh, uh, when you come there and you see this, you will see people crawling all over the cars, literally hand building them. And when customers come and see that, they acknowledge the fact that these cars are genuinely hand built, because you see it being hand built. The line is not motorized, it's not conveyed, it's a hand pushed line, so the cars are pushed from uh, workstation to workstation. And it's also just a lovely, wonderful place um, to, to, to build these fantastic motor cars. And as you go through the plant, you, you will see this incredible attention to detail, the striving for perfection, where our, cra our craftspeople and our master craftspeople doing leather and paint and embroidery and all this type of marquetry and so on and so forth in response to customer requests for very special individualized customized Rolls Royces, you will see them working minutely at their motor cars. In fact, how you see a guy with his magnifying glass, tiny little squirrel hair brush, just touching up a minute imperfection in a piece of wood that's going to go into a car. And people say to me, but Richard, what is this? You, it looks like you guys are trying to make jewelry. It's, it's like a watch manufactory. Uh, this is, you're making cars here for heaven's sake. Who cares if there's the tiniest little imperfection that a squirrel hairbrush needs to touch up? And we like to think we do actually make jewelry. We do actually make works of art. They're very, very special, each and every one of them. And the attention to detail is phenomenal. And then we sell them to some of the most extraordinary people in the world. Um, these are the richest people in the world, the ultra high net worths. Um, these people are demanding. They can have anything, they can buy anything, they can go anywhere, they don't take no for an answer. Um, they're people with big ideas, they've made a ton of money. Some of it, of course, there is inherited, it's old money, but most of it is money made by entrepreneurs, building their own businesses and making big money. They're fabulous people, and these are a few of our customers. Just to, I'm not going to name them because we don't talk about them, but in China, this gentleman has bought several cars from us. No guessing where he comes from. Um, he, could, uh, he could buy Arizona three or four times over, I can tell you right now. Um, this is one of your countrymen, a Californian, uh, who loves his cars and has several of these glass garages on his property in, in Beverly Hills, where he keeps all his cars. And he loves his, his phantom drop head. He's got two Rolls Royces. Wonderful people, I must say. All of them with fantastic stories about how they made their money and all the rest of it. Fabulous people. We come to Wraith, and I'm nearly done. Um, for us to say that, to have a claim to be the best car in the world, not only must the car be exceptionally beautiful, magnificently engineered, not only must it have all the bespoke and wonderful luxury inside that people have come to um, associate with Rolls-Royce, Rolls -Rolls but it's also got to be technology, technologically exactly up to date. Um, there is a sort of a sense that Rolls-Royce is a little old-fashioned. You know, the technology in a Rolls-Royce, it's a little creaky, but that's fine because there's tons of leather and wood, and that's fine. Nothing could be further from the truth. All Rolls-Royces are technologically absolutely cutting edge. 
and in some cases, even world first. In terms of this satellite-aided transmission, we came with this before anybody else. The, the car is, of course, located on the face of the Earth by the GPS system. We all know how that works. But then we've come up with a very clever thing with a GPS system through a small computer speaks to the gearbox management system. So the car sees well ahead of what the driver is seeing. It knows, because it's speaking to the GPS system, that not too far ahead there's a curve and a rise, or that you're going to go off the highway, down an exit, and there's a traffic circle. And it always selects the right gear. It always makes sure that the car is in the appropriate gear for what it knows is coming. It's a very subtle um, thing. You have to search for it when you're driving the car. You have to understand and listen for it and feel for it. But it creates a sense of the car always being composed. It's always in the right gear. It's a bit like having an onboard um, butler who comes and says, don't worry, sir, I've selected fifth gear for the next corner. Everything's fine. You know, it's just happening in the background all the time. We've talked about the design a bit. Fantastic. It's the fastest Rolls Royce ever made. It's the um, most powerful Rolls Royce ever made. And I think you're going to really, really enjoy driving it when you do. We think it's a car with a hint of the noir. It's a sort of, um, even in white, it's a bit of the evil side of Rolls Royce. It's a little bit of a menacing Rolls Royce. It's a Rolls Royce like you've never seen before. It's a Rolls Royce that just has this hint of the noir to it. And of course, inside, there is no compromise on the luxury in this car, the luxury in the materials. This Cannondale paneling on the inside of the door is the largest swathe of wood in the auto industry. Very difficult to do, a real testimony to our woodworkers. The grain runs throughout the car at 55 degrees uh, to, the, to the vertical. And you can imagine if you take a flat piece of wood with the grain running across it like this, and then you have to mold it to fit in the door, as you mold it, the lines all go crooked. But they're not crooked. So um, there's a tremendous amount of work that goes on behind this piece of leather here to ensure that the lines all remain exactly at 55 degrees. A real testimony to our, our uh, master craftsman in the wood shop. And then the piece de resistance of our, uh, of our um, bespoke offering, the Starlight Roof Liner. 1,000. One of 1,400 um, fiber optic cables hand placed in the roof liner of the car. And at night, when you're in that car and you, and you turn it on, it's just the most extraordinary feeling. You feel like you, know, you don't have a roof on and there's all these stars twinkling up, up ahead. And it's just spectacular. It's beautiful. 1,340 um, fiber optic cables hand placed in the roof of the car. And then we'll have customers coming and saying, look, I'm a Sagittarius. Could you put my star sign in the roof of the car? Or could I perhaps have um, the, 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 the constellations over Phoenix, Arizona, where I was born on the day I was born at the time I was born? And then we get a local observatory to certify that on the you know, 1st of June, 1968, the, uh, over Phoenix, Arizona, at 8 p.m., the constellations looked like this. And then we make it and put it in the car. Costs a little bit, but some people want it, and we can do it. I hope you enjoy it. I'm here when you go and when you come back, answer questions, whatever you want. I really enjoy driving the car.